What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and this video is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com because I signed myself, y'all. All right, this is a snippet from an interview that I did with Game from BusyWorksBeats.com. Man, it's, it's one of my favorite interviews that I've done, and I know I've said that about multiple, but this guy is always value packed what he comes with. And something that we always talk about is bringing value to your fans and or customers. This guy breaks it down in a way that I think is gonna be extremely helpful. Check it out. It's the mat work. Another thing is LTV, it's called lifetime value of a customer. This is where we get a little businessy, but this is when your crops will harvest. Okay, so like I'll make it like a farming analogy. So let's say you spend $1 to get somebody's attention to get on your email list. Okay, let's uh -huh. mark it down. Let me mark it down so I don't even get this wrong. Okay. It costs $1 to get somebody's attention through, you teach like opt-ins and like getting emails and, or text messages. Mm -hmm. I mean, numbers. Okay. So it costs $1 to get them to opt-in. That's your upfront cost. And you're always going to lose money on the upfront. Russell Brunson, you know of him? ClickFunnels guy? Mm -hmm. He's gone on record uh, coming from Alex Becker. So I don't know if this is like directly from Russell, but according to Alex Becker, directly from Russell Brunson, who owns ClickFunnels, he said, you always lose money up front. There is no ROI up front. But that doesn't mean long term, there's no ROI. It just means you're going to lose money up front. So if you're spending $500 a month on ads, just consider that a loss. Don't wait for the thousand to be there at the end of the month. And I'll show you why in a little bit. So yep. when people opt into your, to your list, uh, you can do what's called a one-time offer, which is uh, something you offer right after somebody uh, signs up for your email list. Okay. And then after that, this is what I failed to do before. I never added the upsell, like the one time upsell. So I did the one time off. Actually, I never even tried the one time offer. So I was, I screwed these systems up plenty of times. <laughs> but if you want to maximize this to keep people around, you have to create these other ways of keeping in contact because on YouTube, they have a consuming pattern. Then when they leave, it changes. So you have to stay in front of them when they change those platforms. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you talk about retargeting and a bunch of like stuff like that. Um, but the goal is to keep yourself in front of somebody. You know, imagine a girl going to, the girl that you like, goes around to different schools every weekend to party. You want to go to those other schools and be at the party. Yeah. That's, that's the bottom line, like to increase your chances with her. So in this case, the opt-in would be getting her number keep, to be able to keep in contact. Mm -hmm. That's the $1 loss. You're taking a loss. Uh, your one-time offer could be, hey, do you want to go on a date? That's your one-time offer. And then she says, yeah, let's go to an ice cream shop. Then your upsell, your one-time upsell would be like, you know what? On top of the ice cream shop, let's go to this really nice restaurant in this park after that. So now it's like a bigger date. You're, you're increasing the value of the offer and it costs more time for her. So that's a cost. Yeah. Time is right. a cost. And you get her and you build this relationship over time. And I'm not sure what you teach exactly, but the point is to stay in contact with people and add value to them. Mm -hmm. And then over time, we have what's called an LTV, a lifetime value. Now, uh, from what I was coached to know is that you want to start at least at six months of a lifetime value. That means this is your harvest time. So if you're expecting that dollar to return to you, it's probably not going to return until six months later. So that's why Russell Brunson says that your upfront costs are going to be a loss by default. It's the network. Again, that's game from busyworksbeat.com. You can definitely check him out, follow him, all that good stuff. He's great when it comes to answering questions, man. The guy's super helpful. And of course, you can check out that full interview that's extra value packed on brandmannetwork.com. But what I think I love about this particular interview or this snippet more than anything is really that analogy at the end because it kind of helps put things in perspective when we talk about you know how you might look to court a girl or maybe a guy whatever and to see value in different perspectives right not just like oh i want to sell you more stuff i want to sell you more stuff but to see it as figuring out different ways to allow people to connect with me again 
right? Or how do I allow them to get closer to me? Or how do I allow myself to get closer to them? Because when we think about that analogy of, hey, she's going to be at all these different parties and I need to be where she is. Well, that is when it comes to marketing, it's called placement. So one thing that Odd Future, Tyler, the creator, you know who they are, right? At, did at the very beginning, their manager, Christian, I believe his name is, he mentioned that they didn't really market heavy. Right. What they did at the beginning a lot of times was, you know, be at certain shows or at their own show and make sure they set up and be known and made aware at those places. So he said, yeah, we're not really marketing. We're just making people aware or make sure the exposure is there to our merch. And that's how we sell. Well, at the end of the day, that is a portion of marketing called placement. It's like why certain things are at the checkout line. And that exposes you to it. They're not pushing it at you, but you're being exposed to it just because it's in certain proximity to you. That's the same way you want to think about your fans. That's how we thought about that girlfriend scenario being at different parties. That's one way. How can I get myself closer to them? And then obviously a lot of value, which most people spend their time thinking about, is how can I get them closer to me? Not just how can I sell something else right but how can i get them to feel closer to me these are people who are already rocking with you they already like your music or something about you but how can i give them something else that doesn't just show that I, they bought something from me but make them feel more a part of the brand more a part of what i'm trying to build those are some things to think about other than that as always you could check out this full interview at brandmannetwork.com because i saw myself and if you like this video go ahead hit the like button if you like you might as well share and if you're not subscribed you know what to do hit that subscribe button